Over the past year, I've worked remotely in South America, Asia, and all over the US. And everything I carry with me fits inside of this bag. I've been iterating on our digital nomad packing list since 2015, and I'm always looking for new products to see if there's a better fit. In this video, we'll cover what's changed since our last video one year ago. Check out our website for the full list of all 80 products and detailed reviews. Now let's kick it off with my current favorite sling that I don't leave home without. The Bellroy Venture Ready Sling arrived at Pack Hacker HQ just as I was leaving for New York in summer of 23, and I've been carrying it around ever since. Overall, I find its smaller size to be less imposing than the Air Day Sling 3 I had been using previously. There's still enough room for everything I need, but it's got a lot more casual vibe that fits my everyday carry better. Since the buckle is close to the bag instead of centered on my back, it doesn't dig into my spine when I pair it with the Air Travel Pack 3. I'm also a huge fan of the Canva ripstop material. I liked it as soon as I touched it. It's structured but not too thick and has a satisfying, almost rubbery feel that's not bulky or crunchy. While it sometimes slides when I wear it on my upper chest with a slippery jacket, I've gotten used to it. It fits all my everyday carry gear from the packing list well and I love the organization. I pick and choose where to put my battery bank, passport, and the Peak Design mobile tripod since putting everything inside at once is a little too much. However, between the back zipper and the rear divider, I always find the right arrangement depending on what I need to access most frequently. I love this divider in the front pocket though. I think it's so smart. It's a feature that's so simple but so great because I don't have to fish around for what I need. I put my keys on one side and AirPods, lip balm, and earplugs on the other, and the pocket kind of grows and shrinks depending on what you put inside, and the liner in the middle keeps it from opening all the way up for your stuff to spill out everywhere. I also love the simple design of the Alet Travel Wallet. It fits inside of the sling better than the Bellroy travel wallet I was using before. The ripstop nylon is much thinner than leather, so it's smaller and less bulky overall. Plus, the simple layout is really all I need. There are two card slots for loyalty and lounge cards, and I carry backup credit cards too in case I lose my everyday wallet. The card slots face the inside, so nothing slips out if I shake the wallet the wrong way. My passport feels snug inside, and it's easy to remove, even though I have a thicker version with extra pages. There are also separate cash slots, which are great for trips to multiple countries. For example, it let me separate my Brazilian, Colombian, and American currency so I didn't accidentally grab the wrong cash. The next swap is more subtle. You may not notice the difference from the original Arcade Ranger belt until you take it off. The Atlas belt is made with Arcade's new A2 buckle, which I found easier to insert than the previous rectangular model because it tapers to a point. That means it's also easier to put back on. Every second counts when going through TSA, and while you shouldn't have to take off this metal-free belt to go through security, officers sometimes ask me to remove it if they see it. Plus, the belt itself is made with Reprieve polyester, which is 85% post-consumer recycled, and it has reinforced stitching on the edges for a sleeker look. We recommended some great packable sunglasses before. I needed something different when I got a prescription for distance, though. The Switch Classic 345s from Jins are much thinner than traditional glasses and comes with magnetic sunglasses that I can easily clip on and take off as needed. Then I only have to pack one pair of glasses for my whole trip. If you don't need glasses, you can always get non-prescription blue light for working and pop on the sunglasses when it's time to explore. No matter which kind you get, they're pretty thin. To protect them in my bag, I picked up this aluminum eyeglasses case that fits the frames and sunglasses inside. Frankly, it's not my favorite, but we tried like 15 of these, and this was the smallest hard shell case I could find where the glasses still fit inside. It fits nicely in the sling, but the case is scratched up and feels cheap. Cases are so hard to find because glasses shapes and sizes vary a ton between styles and brands, so if there's an option you love, let us know in the comments below, and maybe we'll check it out. Like the glasses, these shorts are also thin and lightweight. They're perfect for working out, doing yoga, and lounging around. They're made with polyester and spandex and don't add much weight to my pack, and they're incredibly comfortable during long yoga sessions. I like that there's a zippered pocket on the front for cash and two stretchy pockets on the inside to fit a key or standard-sized phone. The maximum-sized iPhones fit inside, but just barely. They're great because I can store my gear in there during a workout instead of hanging onto it, though the interior pockets are on the back side, so I prefer a sling when biking. While these shorts are something I needed for a workout, I wanted a more casual-looking hat. The six-panel pack light hat 2.0 from Getaway looks less like a running hat than the five-panel Melon Pace Hydro we had previously. It's also a little more packable and still floats. And the material is super soft and feels more breathable than tech fabric. I like the brim better too because it's less floppy than some other packable hats we've tested. Now it's time for some tech. I've been carrying everything inside of the Air Pro Kit since it launched last year. I previously used the Air Slim Pouch, but the Pro Kit fits everything so well and is significantly smaller. The zippered mesh pocket on the front is the perfect size for my mouse, and the other side has two stretchy mesh pockets for my cords. 
I toss my dongles and other tiny gear inside of the zippered pocket and stick my wall charger and international power adapter in the big back pocket. There's enough room for a smaller tablet if that's what's on your digital nomad packing list, but we found that overfilling the compartment can make the kit tip over, so try to keep it light. I also love that the wide base makes it a great table companion. It's easy to see all my gear when it's standing and it takes up less space on my desk than some other tech pouches I've tested. Plus it fits nicely with the Air Dock Kit 3 in my travel backpack because they create a cube shape when stacked together. More on that later. I tried to go smaller with all the gear when updating this list, but sometimes that is not always possible. I was using the 120 watt Anker 737 wall charger, but needed a higher wattage to keep up with charging my MacBook Pro 16 inch. The 747 is about an inch taller and tops out at 150 watts. So it's more than enough to handle my device. Even though it's a bit bigger than the 737, GN technology makes it smaller than the 140 watt Apple charger. While it's a little heavy, the included suction cups help add a bit of stabilization, and we found ourselves plugging this into our travel adapter most of the time anyway. Be sure to check out Anchor's site to see what power you can expect from the USB-A and three USB-C ports, depending on how many devices you charge. Really, the name of the game here is to find the smallest charger you can that'll still charge all of your individual devices, ideally at once. When I'm not posted up in a coffee shop or a co-working space, I use the Nightcore Carbo 10,000 to keep my devices charged. It packs a big punch for its size and weight and has more rounded corners than the pointy NB 10,000. The unibody carbon construction feels nicer in my hands and more durable too. It has a USB-A port at 18 watts and a USB-C port at 20 watts for fast charging, so I can either charge two devices or recharge the power bank while powering up my phone. The only slightly irritating thing is that it's hard to tell how much power is left. The LED indicators bleed into each other, so it's just kind of hard to tell if it's fully charged or not. When I'm in doubt, I just charge it up. When I switched to the Allet wallet, I knew that I had to add the Rolling Square Air card to the list too. Unlike some Passport wallets that completely zip shut, the Allet Travel Wallet lacks that, so a card fits a lot better than a round air tag. Instead, the air card fits right into one of the card slots. It uses Apple's Find My Network, so it easily integrates into Apple's ecosystem. If I need to find it, it plays a video game like Tone, and if I leave my wallet behind, my phone will just send me a notification. It can also act as a digital business card to share info with my new friends, but I don't use it now that iOS 17 added this feature natively. When it comes to toiletries, the AirDop Kit 3 fits a lot better inside of my bag than the one we were previously using, the Bellroy Dop Kit. We checked out more than two dozen toiletry bags when creating this list, so when Air's third iteration dropped last year, we were excited to find that it fits the gear way better. It's more rectangular and has better organization that doesn't require as much care when it's time to pack. With the Bellroy Dop Kit, everything had to be in the same spot each time or else it wouldn't close. While Air's design allows us to be a bit more casual without sacrificing overall packability. There's more space in the back for bulkier grooming supplies and better access to mesh compartments and the front pocket is perfect for a toothbrush. I like living out of my toiletry bag and I can definitely do that with this thing. Well, everything was so layered in the other kit, I kind of had to unpack it when I got to my accommodation. With this thing, you can just kind of keep everything inside and lay it out on the bathroom counter. Even though this hair trimmer is small, it's more powerful than the wall half pint I was using before. Plus it recharges with USB-C instead of having a replaceable battery. The Ritter feels more like what they use at the barbershop without adding a ton of weight to my kit. It comes with different accessories that you can use for different styles, but I just put the guard I like most on and leave the rest at home. When I was staying in Medellin, Colombia, it was so loud. They had a salsa event every single night at my accommodation until about 2 a.m. So I got some loop ear plugs. The rubber tips are comfortable and allow me to filter out noise when I still need to hear some things like special announcements at the airport. They also sell foam versions that completely block out noise. So on my trip to Medellin, I definitely switched to foam. Each package comes with four different tip sizes and Lauren says she finds the smallest ones most comfortable in her tiny ears. For me, it's the largest they have. While they function a lot like regular earplugs, I like how easy it is to adjust the fit with the loops. You can easily get the right angle instead of trying to get a good grip with your fingers. Plus, they go in pretty much instantly. There's no need to smash them down like other earplugs, putting them in your ears and then letting them expand. I've always had the Hero Clip on my packing list. Lately, I downsized to the Hero Clip Mini because I like it for my sling and don't need to use it on my backpack as much. A Hero Clip works like a regular carabiner but has a built in hook. You can flip it up to hang your bag or water bottle off the cafe table or stall door to keep it off the floor. In this case, I use it to hang the Bellroy Venture Sling off a table or chair when I'm working or eating. 
A lot of Pack Hacker Pro members like using this thing to hang up their backpacks and get them off of the dirty bathroom floor at the airport. While the Mini can handle up to 40 pounds, the carabiner is pretty tiny, so we recommend sticking with the original if that's how you prefer to use it. When looking for a flashlight with a bright beam, I found everything I wanted with the Nightcore Teeny 2. It's a powerful light that is small enough to fit on a keychain. It packs 500 lumens into a 0.74 ounce package, but you can use lower settings to extend the battery life. The 200 lumen setting is bright enough to light up a hotel room for about 45 minutes. There's a learning curve to changing the settings, especially with larger hands, but I got used to it quickly. Plus it recharges with USB-C, so I don't need to pack extra batteries. I've always had a waterproof jacket on the Digital Nomad packing list. I still think the Rab Phantom waterproof pull-on jacket is a good option, but lately I've been leaving it at home in favor of an umbrella. I've been using this one from Mont Bell for months because it protects my bags and takes up less room in my sling than the compressible jacket. It's about the size of a churro and it includes a water repellent case, so you can put it away while it's still wet and it won't seep through to your bag. Of course, if you leave the jacket behind, you won't have an extra layer for when the wind picks up. However, you can always bring both since they're so lightweight. You wouldn't think a ring is essential for a digital nomad, but it's definitely hard to work if you haven't had a good night's rest. That's why I started wearing the Aura Ring instead of a plain silicone band. It tracks my sleep quality every night, which helps me compare how I feel to how well I slept the night before. I started noticing that I'm the groggiest in the morning if I've had a big meal right before bed the night before or a late workout. And when you're traveling, it is easy for your sleep schedule to get out of whack. Now I'm working to cut that out because I always look at the graph on my phone after sleeping with this thing on. It's just easier to track. Now while using the Oura Ring, I'm a lot more aware of that stuff. It's satisfying to wake up and check my sleep graph and my readiness score, and it's helping me get a handle on my health too. Even though the battery lasts a couple of days, I just top it up while I'm in the shower so it stays fully charged. It's waterproof though, so you can charge it whenever convenient or even take it for a swim if you want. So that's what I'm traveling with as I head off on my next trip. And I am always iterating on this list and updating it. So be sure to come back and check out what's changed in the next version. Thanks for keeping here at Pack Hacker. We'll see you next time.